Hey guys, it's JK here. Just thought I'd run through the Sound of the Bells event for you guys. Um, honestly, episode 3 is not a breeze or anything. I mean, the enemies have a lot of HP, like, you know, 2,000-ish. But it's not that hard either. Like, they don't have good defense. Uh, you don't necessarily have to bring the right elements or anything like that. There's not a whole lot of strategy involved. So, as long as you bring kind of beefy units um, who can dish out decent damage, you should be fine. This is the party that I run auto with, um, you know, you put Sita lead because I want more HP for more survivability. I mean, you know, one or two characters may die, um, sometimes not, but it's not a big deal. Um, and I like to bring a mercenary just in case, um, makes it a little bit faster, makes it a little bit safer. Shayna or Selena is probably a good choice because they tend to run up the right side where there's like a fire enemy and of course there's a wind team. Uh, fire can present some problems. So this is the team that I run auto with. Let me just show you real quick. Again, there's not like a whole lot of um, special strategy involved. I mean, I'm sure you could um, make a team with like a couple of tanks because, you know, they split in different directions. So you probably want to have like two mini squads, um, you know, backed up with maybe a healer or a sniper if you're kind of struggling to stay alive. But for the most part, it's pretty straightforward. Um, as far as shard drop rate, the first episode is really bad. It's like zero to maybe two shards per run, but a lot of times you get zero. Um, so I would just run that for the milestone rewards, like run it 10 times and be done with it. Episode two is a little bit better. Um, <clears throat> I think I've seen if you don't get the tre uh, treasure chest, you can get zero, but if you do get them, I think the minimum is pretty much one shard. I've seen as high as five, but on average, I would say you get about two shards per run. Not too, too bad. Uh, and then episode three, I think the lowest I've seen is actually like three. And the most I've seen is seven, uh, probably an average of like four per run. So, you know, this is the best as far as like Per AP, but it is a little bit longer, it is a little bit harder. So, you know, I wouldn't necessarily say you have to farm this level, although you should run it 10 times. Um, get the milestone rewards, which is pretty important because that's how you get your wedding tokens. And if you don't have those, then you can't really unlock Veloz's third job. But if you're having a, a hard time with this level, um, like I would run it manually if you have to I would do the 8 gem continue just get the 10 runs out of the way and then switch over to episode 2 and that's you know a perfectly fine way to farm the shards as well so that's my recommendation as you can see the enemies are um, fairly tough but they're also not that dangerous um, and they take a lot of damage so even if like a wind unit attacks a fire unit, he'll still do, do like 500, 600 damage. It's not a big deal. I kind of like that though. Like I like how it's not so strict. I hate it when it's like you have to attack with a certain element every time. It's a little bit limiting. This one has a lot of possibilities as far as like party comps. So it's very flexible. The fact that it's so flexible, uh, I feel like it could have made a good multiplayer level. So it's a little bit of a shame that you can't do it online. Um, I tend to like those multiplayer levels where you'll see a whole bunch of different strategies. People can bring their favorite characters and try out different things. And, you know, it's not so limited to like, oh, you have to bring Shayna, you have to bring this, you know, like, those are the kind of multiplayer levels I do like. But, um, yeah, unfortunately, it's not uh, available online. So, yeah, I mean, I'm just doing it auto, nothing special going on. After this, I'll also show you my Veloz. He's, like, currently level... Well, he's not quite there yet, but his max level is 72. I mean, definitely by today, he'll be uh, capable of reaching job 3. Um, I'm kind of having some fun with him in multiplayer right now as a crafter. Normally the most limited thing, limiting thing about crafters, in my opinion, is their two move, which is just terrible. But since his second job is Thief, 
you can just, you know, get that move plus one passive on there. Go back to Crafter, and it's kind of like a mini machinist. Um, but the damage output is definitely lower. But as long as the elements are kind of like okay, um, he can still one-shot them. Okay, so I got six shards that run. And as you can see, the equipment drops are pretty good too, so... Yeah, that's that. Let me just quickly show you my Veloc, and then I'll also do a couple of uh, kind of bonus runs, uh, just to show you guys some stuff. Uh, where is he? He's right here. Yeah, so... Is it 5? So I'm 35 shards away from level 75, which is definitely not too bad. So this is his setup right now that I'm running. Pretty cool, although you might want to replace a booster with tune-up because he does need a little bit of extra damage. Like firearms is uh, very similar to machinist. In fact, bursting shot is almost exactly like um, bombshell. I mean, it even has the same scope. So that's pretty nice. Um, but of course what you're aiming for is that bridegroom job. Uh, I would not actually recommend leveling the firearms. I mean, that's kind of a waste of Zenny because you're not going to use them as a crafter in the long run. I just did it for fun. Um, but why don't we go into a couple of the other extra levels. So it's been a while since I've shown my apple running setup and my gold farming setup. I'll do my gold one first. This is very straightforward. It's pretty much just all ranged. Like, you don't need an Outbear in there. I used to use um, a Reagan or even a Gunner would be fine there. So the goal with this is basically to just have everybody kill something on their turn. Magnus will kill two people, but like you just don't want to have wasted turns in there. I'm sure there's better ways to like further optimize, like, you know, with the animations being quicker or they move less and all this stuff, but... This is good enough for me. Uh, if I am really, really diligent and, you know, uh, paying a close attention, um, for every 30 minute key run, I have reached uh, 6 million zenny before. It's probably a lucky run, but typically I'll get about 5 million. So yeah, you just want to make sure that everyone's in position to hit somebody on their turn. Like if you swap some of the orders, sometimes like, They'll just kind of move around and not shoot at anybody, so you just want to play around with that. I've made videos on this in the past, but it's been a long time, so just wanted to show it again. That's my Gold Rush crew. Nothing really special there. Um, what is a little bit harder to emulate, or you know, maybe m more people won't be able to do this, is my um, Apple running party. With this one, I can actually get like over a hundred apples in 30 minutes. Um, if you don't have a Balt, what you can do is you can use Mazamune. And just make sure that you equip her um, both of her attack passives. Because if she only has the one attack passive and then she has Faint as the other passive, then uh, she probably won't be able to kill the uh, Thunder Element Ratty next to the treasure chest. But because Balt is Wind, his element to advantage is good enough and of course for your subs make sure you equip, uh, put people that you want to actually level so this one is pretty efficient I don't really know if you can get much more efficient than this as far as auto um, teams go so yeah he's gonna kill this one guy not a big deal and you want to have your uh, fastest sniper in the third position, so my, it's Almira. The order does matter because uh, if other snipers go first and they clear their line, then it's gonna like leave enemies in spots where you can't really kill them efficiently. So it does matter. So your fastest sniper should be in the third position. Uh, this is, uh, I think this is my second position. The second fastest sniper. And then my slowest sniper is in the fourth position just to pick off one enemy. Yeah, and then this is where Baltz will just come in and grab the treasure chest and pick off the last enemy. There's ways to have it all cleared in one turn, but I haven't found a way to get all the treasure chests doing that. So this one is like, you know, one person moves after that first round, but he does get the treasure chest. It's very efficient for me, so... Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I don't know, it's pretty much all auto this video, but 
you know, some people have been asking me how I do it and everything like that. And it's been a while since I've shown it. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I will actually have another video coming out later today. Uh, I actually fell upon some Lofia shards, so I'll make a Lofia story uh, video. But hope you guys enjoyed this, and uh, yeah, happy farming for Veloz. It's pretty cool that we get a free character like that, and um, kind of eager to try him out. Level 75 Bridegroom, hopefully he's pretty decent, so yeah, take care guys. Peace.